A few weeks ago, we had a look at the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin 120SE, a quite good air cooler. However, its main benefit was that it costs as much as the average Lian Li fan. But there is something better. This is the Thermal Ride Phantom Spirit 120, the cooler everybody needs to know about. Even if it looks kinda similar, it's so much not. Just wait for the benchmark. It is still a dual tower, dual fan cooler, sure, but already the fans are slightly different because now. Now we get two TL C12C fans. These are spinning at up to 1500 rpm, so 50 rpm slower than the original ones. Now I will say that I call kind of bullshit on the stats that Thermorite includes on their website. They are saying that there is no difference in the fan's performance spec. Zero difference to a second decimal. As if they are going to be 0 0.0 something identical while spinning 50 rpm slower. As if that would happen. But they definitely got some other sorts of upgrades going. Now we got rubber around the corners and they are spinning counterclockwise because apparently that changes something without changing something. Anyway, inside the brown cotton box, other than the dual tower heatsink and two fans, we also get the usual mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, as well as some thermal paste and a 1 to 2 PVM splitter. Other than the few changes on the fans, it's the heatsink that's the most important here. In the bottom we still got that 40 by 45 and a half millimeter copper nickel plated base, but now we got 7 heat pipes traveling up 55 fins until reaching the end of the two 157 mm high towers, which are ending in a black painted heatsink cover. So it does look like we are up for a treat, or no, I, I already know, yes, yes, this thing is, is definitely a treat. But before that, to install the cool on AMD, we first need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD spacers followed by the two brackets with the central part pointing inwards and then screw everything down. Over on Intel, we need to take the backplate according to the socket, position it behind the motherboard, slap the appropriate spacers on top, followed by the retention brackets and screw everything down. As for RAM compatibility, we got a almost similar situation as we had on the Peerless Assassin. About 35 to 36 mm high RAM and from there we can move the right fan up until we can make it fit. And now let's finally get to these benchmarks cause oh this is a good one. We benchmarked the cooler on our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. At the lowest 120 watts workload, which would be the most gaming type scenario, the reign of the Phantom Spirit begins. At 31.8 degrees C above ambient, this extremely unspecial looking cooler managed to get one of the best results we have seen on an air cooler so far. It's sitting right there in between the Iceberg Thermal Ice Lead X7 and Dark Rock Elite, which are both 7 heat pipe coolers themselves. To make it clear, the difference between all three of them really boils down to point something. So it is absolutely in the realm of margin of error. But all three are excellent performance at low level load. Also important to note are the changes to the Phantom Spirit 120 SE. This is what a few millimeters and a additional heat pipe can do if done right. But let's get to the noise because not only is the cooler performing better, but it is also quieter. By slowly lowering the fan speed and noting the temperature and noise in 10% steps, we can create these noise to performance lines. And you need to keep in mind that the fans on here are spinning at only 1500 rpm while being at the top of the benchmark chart. And now imagine the noise to performance ratio. Exactly, that thing humbled everybody else, where previously the Be Quiet Dark Rook Elite had the lead by quite a bit, the Phantom Spirit just doubled that jump. From start to finish, the Phantom Spirit had the absolute best ratio. No matter what dB you would normalize this to, the Phantom Spirit won at 120 watts. And just to compare it to the PE from a few weeks ago, you can actually see by the shape of the line that it's kind of the same fan, just minimally slower and something is not being picked up, probably vibrations because now we got rubber going. But thanks to the temperature offset, the PE does 
not stand a chance. By turning the heat up to 250 watts, things changed a tiny bit. At 63 degrees C above ambient, the Phantom Spirit is still at the second place, but now it is sitting behind the Dark Rook Elite and the Ice Lead started to fall behind. But still, the second best result for an air cooler cooling down 250 watts. For the noise to performance ratio, things started to get quite squished. At the highest point, the Phantom Spirit might have a slightly better ratio than the Dark Rock Elite, but going down from there, we saw a battle between the two, with the Phantom Spirit being slightly better below 50% fan speed. The 320W workload, though I really wouldn't recommend doing that on an air cooler, that one is just a copy of the 250W. At 84.7 degrees C above ambient, the Phantom Spirit is still on the second spot behind the Dark Rook Elite, and the corresponding noise to performance line is quite quite short given we can't really touch the fan speed by a lot before the CPU stops melting. Performance wise it's an absolute beast. Based on our results it is by quite a bit the reigning air cooler for lower powered workloads like gaming. And as you go up the ladder it ends up at roughly the same level as a Be Quiet Dark Rook Elite. So very very impressive performance especially considering it is only 157 mm high and looking like the most regular dual tower cooler you could find. Of course all the numbers and info of today is based on only the Phantom Spirit 120, not the SE or SE RGB or Phantom Spirit Evo, which looks really cool and I would love to test that one next, but keep in mind there are different versions and this is solely for the 120 and nothing version. But let's get to the most important question. Considering the Peerless Assassin had the price tag of two Coca-Cola six packs, this newer and better performing cooler must be significantly more expensive. Four euros. I can get a Phantom Spirit 120 SE right now for a whopping 39 euros, which is four more than the Peerless. Ooh. Let's put this into, into perspective. It performed roughly similar to a Dark Rook Elite. And I can get about two and a half Phantom Spirits for the price of a single Elite. Keep that in mind. Under the last Thermal Ride video, I got quite a few comments about build quality, which I do and I do not agree with. Sure, if you hold it in your hands, it is not a Noctua cooler. It is not a Be Quiet cooler. It is not like, it, it won't fall apart. Of course not, don't get me wrong. It's absolutely okay. But it's not a high-end feeling. This is absolutely true, but what did you expect for below 40 bucks? Of course, this is not going to feel like a 100 euro plus Noctua cooler. And for that price point, as long as the cooler doesn't fall apart as soon as you remove it from the box, it's performance alone that counts. And on that front, price to performance, for now, this is the number one that I am aware of. So really great job Thermal Ride. And if you ask me, if I would do a budget build for a 14700K, 7800X3D and anything below, this would be my first choice. Even if it doesn't feel like the ultra premium Noctua cooler, which is definitely true, but considering the price, you can't expect that. But Okay, for today, this is going to be it for Thermal Ride and the new price to Performance King, the Phantom Spirit 120. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to continue financing that research into Thermal Ride. How are they actually paying for their aluminum and copper and keep that price point. Something is off here. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at the video where we tried to build inside the prototype of the Cascade Laptop 20 case. That was a wild ride to say the least. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.